The concept of carbon capture and utilization, also called carbon tech or CO2 valorization, consists of capturing CO2 from through gas or directly from the air and converting this CO2 into essential products such as renewable fuels and chemical or building materials. Actually, it's very hard to answer the question on the climate and environmental impact of CCU technology as a whole, because under the CCU concept, there are hundreds of different technologies and applications also, and these technologies and applications might not have uh, the same impact. So for example, one very interesting pathway is uh, CO2 mineralization, where we make CO2 reacts with reactive industrial waste to form aggregates, concrete or asphalt, for example. So not only this technology allows for a permanent storage of CO2 in building material, but this technology also allows to create products that can substitute carbon intensive products such as cement. So we can replace cement by CO2 based building material. So the gain is double at the end because we can reduce the CO2 emission from the stack where CO2 is captured, but we can also avoid emission to create new cement. Plus, if the CO2 mineralized is captured directly from the air, that may allow to reach negative emissions, so to remove the CO2 from the atmosphere, and this is crucial if we want to reach uh, climate targets. But CCU is not only about emission reduction or avoidance, it's above all a circular solution that allows to reduce pressure on raw resources and also to move away from fossil uh, carbon use, because CCO2 can be used as a feedstock to create most existing chemical building blocks uh, and fuels and most of the hydrocarbon uh, we have now via the power to x approach. It's an approach of using renewable electricity to create a product and store this electricity in the product, so for example in the synthetic fuel. But to make sure this technology have an impact to mitigate climate change and that they are viable economically, it's crucial to assess the life cycle of the product that is created, but also to implement techno-economical analysis. It's really important that before we take large-scale action and deploy technologies, that we understand their impact both in the environment and the economy. Right now, there's a bit of a gold rush mentality in, in these new technologies. And uh, just the mere fact that we use CO2 to make a product does not mean that it actually is better for the environment. It has to be done right. And our life cycle assessments actually show that uh, some CO2 utilization um, processes are actually worse than not using CO2. So we need to understand that upfront to choose the right technologies, the right processes to make things uh, in the best possible way. And at the same time, of course, we need to understand that the economics work. Uh, if a product can be made, but it's so expensive and so impossible to, uh, to make at scale, nobody will engage in that either. So life cycle assessment and techno-economic assessment really give us the answers before we do something, and that's really critically important. We can use these tools to guide research and uh, provide information for, for policymakers and uh, investors. So there are different options in front of us. We can reduce our emissions from things like our vehicles and our factories or we can take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, so actively, actively reduce it. And these are legitimate options and they can be part of a package. Now, some people are concerned that if we are too positive about the opportunities to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, then we will go slow on our emission reductions. And that could be a real risk. But in reality is that the cost of net em negative emissions technologies at the moment is such that it's far, far cheaper to reduce our emissions in the first instance rather than to try to retrieve the carbon dioxide from our atmosphere later. There are many options in terms of carbon capture and use or, or negative emissions. And I don't think it's so much a matter of comparing which one is best or biggest because each of them is likely to be small relative to the size of the amount of emissions we're actually producing at the moment. 
So I'd actually rather be thinking of an and solution where we need mineralization and uh, use of carbon as a chemical feedstock and uh, locking it up underground. Um, and so I think we need all of these options. Well, one of the really important things about carbon capture and use or negative emissions. So instead of thinking it as a waste product, we actually start to think of it as a useful resource. And so in, in a sense, we start to monetize carbon dioxide rather than in the way which we've done it before. How much does it cost to remove it and essentially get it out of the system? Instead, we need to be thinking about this is a valuable resource which we can convert into valuable products. And so as soon as you do that, it changes the psychology, it changes the economics, and it potentially changes the politics. So we need to have these conversations about options to use carbon dioxide and to actually make our lives better, our economies stronger, and to be more sustainable as societies.